My name is Seth Kane. I'm a visual artist. I primarily work in oil on panel. I also do some sculpture and video. When I was 12 or 13, I was allowed to bicycle into the city from the island where I live and hang out in the village and go to museums. And I was at the Whitney and MoMA looking at work that really inspired me. Steel sculpture primarily fascinated me because I am naturally a maker of things. I like working with my hands. And eventually I got serious enough about it that there was no question, this is what I wanted to do. I applied to and got into RISD. And I stayed for the first year and then left to be an artist. I didn't want to teach. I didn't need a diploma. And I made the first stab at a mobile studio because I wanted to make plain air sculpture, feeling that proximity to the inspiring source material was essential to faithfulness in the work. So I built a studio on a truck and took off from Providence and crossed the country making little sculptures. My very last gig, I served as a federal court appointed monitor in an ocean pollution case. So I was riding thousand foot million barrel tankers in and out of Valdez, San Francisco and Puget Sound. I was an artist with a camera. I was a fly on the wall. I would have paid to do this and I was being paid attorney's wages. So now I come back to painting. The first thing I know is this maritime experience. So the first paintings were all ship related. I had done that in the past, but refinding my way, that was the first, but eventually I got the courage to begin to paint people and faces, which is a much harder challenge than the machinery I know so well. <laughs> I enjoy working in a range of sizes. I work representationally. I feel that it's a language that needs no translation, no page of text explanation on the wall adjacent to the image. Most of us perceive the world more or less as I paint it. Uh, I am not a photorealist. I have no interest in imitating or copying the artifacts of photography in paint. I use a camera to capture and create information that later becomes paintings, but I do edit quite a bit in post-production prior to commencing painting. So these images need no translation. They are what they look like. They're not complicated any more than what they depict and what those things might mean to the viewer. The first step in my process is that of inspiration from daily life. I am one of those people who walks around typically with a big grin on my face. Everything or nearly everything I see is interesting. So the process becomes one of filtering that enjoyment to try and find things that have more meaning. I then will typically take a number of photographs of things that speak to the spark that now I'm following. They may all be multiple images shot in the same place. So I have actually climbed crosswalk signals in Manhattan and stood on top with very few people paying any attention and shot hundreds of photographs later to combine them post-processing into a final image 
changing clothing and faces and moving people around and turning them around until I really feel comfortable. There's nothing extraneous and everything I want is there. Time to start painting. I found that with a digital projector in a dark room, I could paint in full color in the dark. And it's the most fun I ever had because you can almost do no wrong. And it's a way to capture many complex images relatively quickly and produces fully finished paintings. The larger ones, of course, the underpainting might take more like a week, but then the projector's turned off and now you're into just painting the painting and you can go back to being much more fluid and dynamic in your paint handling because the drawing is in full color in front of you.